In this tutorial, I'll cover the basics of animations, how to reduce your animation code using stateful hooks, and how to create sequenced animations in Flutter. If you're new to the Fold Stacks channel, please subscribe and I hope you enjoy this tutorial. We'll start off by creating a new Flutter project and I'll call mine Animation Guide. Once that's done, we can go ahead and open it in Visual Studio Code. As usual, I will go ahead and clean up the main file and I'll set the home to an empty scaffold. Let's start with the basics. To create a single animation in Flutter, there are three things that are required. You require the animation controller and this manages the animation. It produces a new value for every frame that is rendered and keeps track of the animation state and exposes functionality for you to play, forward and reverse or stop an animation. The next part is the actual animation or tween. This defines the begin and end values along with how to move from the beginning to the end through a curve. The default curve is linear, which means that it, for every frame it will increase by the exact same amount that it did for the previous frame. This object will notify the controller through the value listenable protocol whenever its value has changed. The last part of the animation is, is a ticker class. The ticker class is a class that listens to the frame callback and calls a tick function that passes the elapsed duration between the current frame and the last frame to the ticker listener. In our case, the ticker listener is the controller. To keep the code nice and separate, I will create a new file for every section of the animations that we cover. You can create a new file called basic animation. We'll import the material package and then we'll create a stateful widget called basic animation view. The first thing we'll do is add our animation controller and our actual animation called grow animation into the state class. Then we have to initialize our controller and our animation and we'll do that in the init state override. We'll start by creating a new animation controller and for the vsync property we'll pass in this current state object and we'll set the duration to 3 seconds. The vsync requires a ticker provider and we can add that functionality onto our class by adding on a mixin using the ticker provider state mixin. Next up we'll define our grow animation. For the grow animation we'll create a tween of type double. We'll set the beginning value to 0 and the end value to 200. And then we will call the animate function and pass in the controller. And the last thing we want to do is tell the controller to play the animation. And we do that by calling the forward function on the controller. So how exactly does all of this help us to animate UI? To see where we will be intercepting these values, we will add a new listener to our controller. And this function will be called every time a new value is generated for our animation. We'll print out the animation value using the growAnimation.value every frame. Before we run this, head over to the main file and change your home to the basic animation view that we just created. If we restart this program now in the debug console, you should see values being printed out every frame and those are the values that we will use to animate our UI. So let's put something simple down that we can use to animate. We'll put a container inside of a center widget. We'll give it a height of 200, width 200, and we'll set the background color to red. And instead of using the fixed 200, we will replace that with the grow animation value, which we know changes every frame. And now that the values are updating every frame, we also need to make sure that the build function is re-rendered on every frame. So in the listener, we will call set state, which will cause our build function to re-render with a new value from the animation. And if you restart your app, you'll see a square growing in the middle of the screen and it'll stop when it gets to 200 width and height. That's it for basic animation. The animations are very verbose as I've said before, but that's what we have for now and we'll see how we can reduce that code in the next section. Flutter provides us with a widget called animated widget, which will help us eliminate the listener and the set state call that we are doing currently. Make a copy of the basic animation file and call it animation widget. Then we'll rename the view to animated widget view. Then you can go to the main file and you can change your home to the animated widget view. To effectively use the animated widget, we want to define the pieces of the UI that we can group together and animate that individually. Since we only have the container that's growing, we will take the container's widget code and we will use that in our animated widget. We can go ahead and cut out the container code 
and we'll create a new stateless widget called growing container. Then in the build function, we can paste our container code. And I usually remove all the key parameters because it clutters my code. Then we can update from a stateless widget to an animated widget. And we'll take in an animation controller into the constructor. The animated widget is a value listenable widget. So it expects a listenable value to be passed into it. We will construct our animation using a tween of type double beginning at zero and ending at 200. And we will call animate and pass in the controller that is passed into the constructor. Then in our build function, we can get that animation of it as an animation type double. We'll call it animation and we'll just set that equal to the listenable that we set in our super constructor. And then we can update the grow animation values to animation.value. You can go ahead and add the growing container into your center of the scaffold. Now we can remove the listener with a set state call. We can also go ahead and remove all the growing animation code from our class. The reason we can remove the set state is because the animated widget is a stateful widget, but it also uses a listenable value. And that value has a function to handle the change and it calls set state for us automatically when that value changes. So we don't have to add a listener and call set state manually. It will do that internally as those values update. And before we run this code, which I did, you have to make sure that we pass in the controller that it requires. And if you run this code now, you'll see the same boring animation of the growing container in the center of your screen, with the only difference being that you have a little bit less code and you know how to use the animated widget. To build on the animated widget, we will go ahead and copy that animated widget file and we'll call the new file hooks view. Then we can change the class name to hooks view. And this is where we'll use flutter hooks to create less verbose code for some animation logic. We'll start off by adding the Flutter hooks package. We'll add version 0.6.0. Just to make this clear, this is not a tutorial on Flutter hooks. This is only a way to reduce your animation code using provided hooks by the Flutter hooks library. Right off the bat, we can remove all of the stateful constructor functionality and we can change our hooks view to extend a hooks widget. Then we can go ahead and import the flutter hooks package. Then we can also go ahead and remove the init state override. And additionally, we can remove the animation controller variable. There's two things to note about flutter hooks. A hook has to be called in the build function and it should never be called conditionally, meaning that you should always call the hook in the build function. What we'll use is the use animation controller hook and we'll pass it a duration of three seconds and set that to a variable called controller. And after setting that variable, we will start the animation by calling forward. We've now reduced our code from about 15 lines of code to five lines if you exclude the override and the class definitions. I don't think I need to show you the same boring animation working again, so we'll skip that and get straight onto the sequence animation. One thing that's difficult to do with only controllers and your animated widgets is to animate something in a sequence. Create a new file called sequence animation and in that file create a stateful widget called sequence animation view. We'll add the ticker provider state mixin and then we'll create our animation controller and we'll add a new type of object called sequence animation. And to use the sequence animation, we would have to add a new package called flutter sequence animation. If you go back to the sequence animation file now, you should be able to import the flutter sequence animation. Let's create a basic scaffold and for the body of that scaffold, we'll center a widget called animated boulder. This animated boulder takes in an animation, which is in the form of our controller. And it also takes in a boulder that provides us with a context and a child if we supply the child to the animated boulder. Let's look at this widget. So at the top, you can see that this is an animated widget, which means that it takes in a listenable value. Given that it's an animated widget, it means that whenever this value changes, it will call the build function. And instead of rebuilding a UI, it will execute the builder function that we passed in. 
This gives us an opportunity on the outside to rebuild our UI every frame that the animation produces a new value. To start off, let's override the inert state function and we'll initialize our controller and pass in vsync as this current state object. So as you see, we leave out the duration for the controller and that's because the sequence animation builder will calculate the duration based on the sequences that we provide to it. And after this is done, we can go ahead and forward the controller and then we can start defining our sequence animation for the sequence animation builder. We'll split the animation in three parts. We want it to fade in, we want it to grow in, and we also want it to slide in from the right side to the left. To define a sequence animation, you construct a new sequence animation builder and then you add animatable objects to it. An animatable object is defined by the tween, which is the animation itself. Then you give it a starting time, you give it an end time, and you also give it a tag so you can reference the values later on. We'll start by giving it a tween of type double that begins at zero and ends at 200. Then we'll give it a from value of zero milliseconds, which means that the animation will start at zero milliseconds and the two value will set at 300 milliseconds. And the last thing to define for an animatable is the tag that you want to use to reference the value later. We'll set the first tag as grow. Then we can go ahead and copy all that code and we will change our tween to go from zero to one. We'll start the animation at zero milliseconds, but this one will end at 400 milliseconds and the tag we will set as fade in. Then we can copy all of that code again. This time we'll begin at 100 and we'll end at zero. We'll start the animation at 300 milliseconds and we'll continue that animation until 800 milliseconds. And the tag we'll set as margin slide. Let's start by animating the animation slide in for the container. To fake the slide in for the container, we will animate the left margin of the container only. And to access the margin slide animation that we added, you can index into the sequence animation using the tag margin slide and you can get the value from the value property. Next up, we will animate the height of the container and we will get that by indexing into the sequence animation using the grow tag and setting that to the value. For the width of this container, I want to set it to the full screen so that the margin takes more of an effect when it's on the left side. For the color of this animation, we'll set it to purple to shout out full stacks, a cool little YouTube channel. And to perform the fade in animation, we will wrap our container in an opacity widget and for the opacity, we will set it to the sequence animation and we'll index into it using the fade in key and we'll set that to the value. Now back in the main file, go ahead and set your home to the sequence animation view. And when you run this code now, you should see the animation grow in, slide in and fade in all at once. Now I know the animations were underwhelming in this tutorial, but I wanted to focus on the animation and the mechanics of it itself. I can create more fancy animations using Flare, but for now, that's all that we are doing with these animations. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and share this video. I will see you guys next week.